Reporting in Frederick County, Maryland today, we will be talking to one of Maryland's most well-known and vocal protesters and activists for free speech. We are here to get his take on the recent redesigning of Frederick County's long-standing Francis Scott Key flag, as well as other issues. Sean Porter, What's good up, to man? see you. I appreciate you taking the time to do this interview today. Anytime, man. And uh, speaking on current issues that's facing Frederick County, we know that you obviously have a prominent local voice and it's always nice to hear from you. Uh, the people I talk about, they don't agree with your sentiment, but thank you for that. I first want to talk a little bit about yourself. I think a lot of people know about the fact that you go out and maybe they refer to you as the sign guy or the guy who goes out and does these protests. So I want to first start on that area. How did you ever get into that? Well, I've been an obnoxious prick my entire life. Um, I've always been very artistic. Uh, most people think I'm autistic, it's artistic. I used to put up signs in my old neighborhood in Lake Linganore in protest of an HOA that was saying you couldn't put up happy graduation signs or any political signs that, um, you know, they were trying to regulate when you could put up political signs even though there were no covenants whatsoever recorded at the circuit court clerk's office. They li literally just made up rules and laws about political signs and artistic signs, and they had no legal standing to do so. And it's very well known in Lake Linganore that the uh, HOA there was, was targeting people over their signs. And so that's where I really got into like the more outrageous ones, mm -hmm. uh, but that's how I got started. And then I went dormant for years um, until the lockdown and Larry Hogan came along and locked down our state and cost everyone I know, as well as myself, a bunch of money. And uh, that's when I came out with the infamous Larry Hogan sign, the suck my d Larry Hogan, go f yourself, you Nazi d My main goal was to just go places where I would get on the news. So right now we are conducting this interview in the hallway of Winchester Hall. You held a protest here, I believe it was maybe a week ago, right here at Winchester Hall. What was that protest over? Um, that protest was specifically over the county's uh, flag redesign competition. Mm -hmm. and that's something we're going to get into. Mm -hmm. And essentially, the Frederick County government is just ignoring the will of the people. Nobody wants to redesign the flag. The Francis Scott Key flag is being targeted because it has an old white man on it. And that is literally it. And they're woke and they're just looking for uh, an excuse to take down a statue or a symbol any chance they get. You know, our heritage is Francis Scott Key, the Star Spangled Banner. That's like a claim to fame for our county. So he's on a flag. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I don't understand what the problem is. There was no discussion uh, before the elections that, hey, if you elect me, I'm going to just destroy all of our statues, symbols, and flags and, and put up you know, stuff that's more hip and contemporary with my liberal, insane ideology. How do you feel about the fact that the county executive is starting the changing of this flag but didn't prior take any surveying efforts to see if the citizens actually wanted a redesign of this flag or not? Well, I think she is an overly anxious um, activist type person and her views and opinions don't match up with the majority of the people in Frederick County. And I mean, in my opinion, I'm sure she's a really nice girl and all that, mm -hmm. but you know, I, I'm just, I'm not into fat chicks. So like, I have no interest in knowing about her, hearing her talk, her opinions are, are irrelevant to me. And honestly, when you do something like this, where you get elected and immediately the first thing you do is take down the county's flag and try and put up one in your own honor, essentially, um, you know, it, it makes you look like a fucking So do you think that the citizens of Frederick County should have had the opportunity to vote on this issue? Absolutely. The citizens of Frederick County should have their voices heard, not muffled and silenced by the county executive's office who won't even make press statements to the press when mm -hmm. asked for it. Why do you think our county executive wants to change this flag so badly. What do you think her intentions are? Well, I think she just doesn't like old white guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, she wants to put up a transgender type flag, just like Cook County did when they had their flag redesign competition. Maybe we could just have a flag with like McDonald's on it because everybody loves McDonald's. And you know, I mean, think about it. What is your take on the fact that despite the fact there have been protests and public pushback on this issue, despite all that, the county executive is trucking forward on this issue. What does, that, what does that say to you? It says to me that she wants to subject this entire train wreck of a art competition flag redesign where the government is actually selecting the finalists for the peasants to vote on. She wants to subject the whole thing to judicial review in, in federal court in Baltimore. Basically, I have a question, a civil rights question, and I'm posing that question to the federal courts 
as soon as this thing actually you know gives me standing to do so as soon as they disqualify my anti-slavery flag which i'm pretty sure you know if you disqualify an anti-slavery flag and you don't let the citizens vote and i'm pretty sure you're you're endorsing slavery have you personally spoken with county executive fitzwater as to your grievances and if so how has she responded to them uh i have sent emails to county executive and county council members and they can't even be bothered to give a response and having up to 100 million people actually view my content and up to 26 million people actually watch at length my content in a, a single month i would think she would have some sort of interest in in addressing and making a statement in defense of her positions or promotion of her positions to a gentleman that a lot of people in the county uh, look to for information, seeing as how the Frederick News Post has basically collapsed. Do you think that part of the problem is that just not enough people know about this issue? I think that that's a problem that's not going to be, uh, it's not going to be a problem for much longer. I'm going to leave it to you that way. I have some things planned, some protests, some gigantic banners planned that are being designed right now as we speak. Um, I, I'm planning on an auto dial campaign where I'm going to leave pre-recorded voicemails. It's called ringless voicemail for seven tenths of a penny. Mm -hmm. I can call a landline and leave a phone number. I can also call some of the cell phones and leave a message. So in your opinion, do you believe that any part of Frederick County government is just flat out corrupt? Any part or the whole thing? Is that any your part, question? Any are you part tricking, including are you the tricking whole me? Thing? Maybe you think the whole <laughs> thing is. Maybe you think a certain part is. Maybe you think a certain department is. What's your response? I've dealt with some departments that are good, some departments that are bad. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the government. You know, it's six to one, half dozen to the other. Sometimes you get someone that cares about their job. Sometimes you get people that don't. A hand-picked panel of government employees and hacks that receive grants are going to be pre-selecting what the government wants to give the people to choose from, not allowing the people to just choose from all the selections. So I just feel that's a violation of my First Amendment civil rights as a person that has entered the flag competition, but we'll leave that up to a federal court to decide. Right, and that was I was about to um, touch on that. So rumor is going around that there could potentially be a lawsuit. Coming not a from, rumor. Not a rumor? I've spent a lot of Talk money already. About it. Well, I can't really talk to you about too much of it, except okay. for the fact that there's actually a similar situation going on with a congressional art competition where someone got offended about art and they actually tried to take, you know, change mm -hmm. the winner and, and take the guy's artwork down. And, and that's in the news right now. And it's kind of funny how it parallels what we're talking about here. Um, but a lot of places where they had these flag redesign competitions, nobody challenged the authority. Right. Nobody challenged uh, the ability for government employees to silence the free speech of citizens that are submitting artwork, which is exactly what's going on here. My artwork has political value. It has artistic value. And it has literary value because mm -hmm. of the phrase that I put on it in regards to the abolition of slavery. And then when I do sure. file, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm basically doing it from the, the defensive point of I'm writing it from the motion to dismiss point. So everything that they could bring up on a motion to dismiss, I'm working it backwards and I'm just including it in my pleadings to the court. So this is going to be like 100 pages. One of the things that has recently come to light is this new issue with the county executive receiving private security from the Frederick County Sheriff's Office. Uh, and this is allegedly in conjunction with some language or some incoming dialogue that your office has been receiving that I guess has been described as threats. What is your take on that? My, my take on that is Jan Gardner had tried to get, that's the previous county mm -hmm. executive, she tried that's to get true. a peace order against me mm -hmm. um, to stop me from protesting her in front of her house to save embarrassment. And um, that didn't go anywhere. It was it was granted temporary status, and then it, it it had no effect. I literally went out in her neighborhood, protested four days earlier than I was going to, made a worse sign, and I spent hours and hours and hours freezing in snow, wearing snowmobile clothes, just to spite her attempt to silence and stifle my free speech. Uh, but I think that this stems from the county executive's dislike of free speech and protests against her, or anyone that has a con uh, concern or an idea that's contrary to what she's trying to shove down people. Throats. They're acting as private security guards working overtime on a special detail or what have you to secure her princess, her majesty, and, and she's treating herself like she's, you know, the president of the free world. It's, it seems ridiculous to me. And realistically, uh, you know, I, I don't know what credible threats she could have, but I have submitted public information acts to Brian Black, the county attorney, demanding copies of any threats that she has received. I, I made the exact same PIA to Melissa Hoffman at records with the Frederick County Sheriff's Office. I'm looking for any threats that are actually real. I think that she literally is just 
She got in and she wants private security. What's next, a limousine? I'd like a limousine. So correct me if I'm wrong, you're, you certainly have, you're certainly hard edged on this freedom of speech issue, but you don't seem like somebody who is on a, a war path for political domination. Why do you think it is that people, many people in this county, especially in our government, are scared of you, and what would you say to them to calm their anxieties over you? Anybody who is scared of someone exposing the truth is clearly guilty of something. Mm -hmm. Whether it's misconduct or violation of civil rights, if you're against a civil rights protester, you clearly are someone who supports the violation of civil rights in Frederick County. Should they worry about you? Um, only if they're guilty of wrongdoing that will come out in discovery. Okay. Because I plan on using the power of the subpoena extensively with Frederick County government and production of documents is going to be it's going to be quite excessive. I'm, I want everything. I want absolutely everything related to the Fitzwater administration. And just to, just to put it out there, the Fitzwater administration is going to be subject to PIA requests from myself and others for the entire time she's in office, because I do feel that she is just a crook that doesn't like free speech and wants to shove her agenda down mm -hmm. our throats and violate our constitutional rights. What is your message to the county executive and to the county council at large in Frederick County? Well, if they were to take 12 citizens randomly selected that weren't receiving government money and weren't other interested parties in seeing the government's agenda pushed down our throats, um, and they whittled down the selection of flags, um, that would be okay if they're just citizens. But they're not. They're government employees. They're people that get grants from the government in the art world. They're college people. Mm -hmm. They're all basically sucking on the of Jessica Fitzwater and the council. That's one of the interesting things about this whole situation is that even if you are gonna change the flag, which they didn't take a vote on, but then you have all these submissions, which I'm sure they're receiving hundreds of submissions, including yours, and but most of them will never come to light. We'll never I'm gonna get them. copies of every submission, just mm -hmm. to be clear. I've already okay. given preservation. Uh, I sent a preservation email to Brian Black and he acknowledged that he received the preservation well, letter not to destroy any evidence, emails, submissions, any, uh, any dialogue at all pertaining to this matter. I sent a notice of intent to file a claim against the county. But when it comes to the government, like, you know, you're going to have to like, it's like a root canal. You got to, yeah. you got to go deep down in there. Uh, and sometimes you got to extricate <laughs> the tooth in order to get to the truth with these guys. They just cover everything up. So I'm going to expose it all. All I can say is, is when you get those, a copy of all those flag submissions through discovery, I think there's a lot of people who would be interested in seeing what they could not vote on. I cannot wait. I guarantee you we're gonna find some stuff that people would really appreciate, like my artwork, which yeah. is stunningly beautiful. I'll have to show it to you. It is amazing. It is mm -hmm. my deep, heartfelt artwork. And uh, my final question for you is, how do you think Frederick County gets back on track? What do we need to do? The quickest thing they could do is to let everybody vote on the designs and then the issue dies. Mm -hmm. It literally dies in the open light. And, and the other thing is they're allowing people from communist China to vote on these flag submissions. North Korea can vote on them, Saudi Arabia, Iran. Um, they're not checking IP addresses. There's no verification. There's no uh, proof of residency. And the bottom line is it just shows a, a general lack of care and disrespect and reckless disregard for citizens' rights to freedom of speech yeah. to where our free speech can actually be subjugated by the communist Chinese party. Sean Porter, we appreciate you bringing your free speech down to Winchester Hall today. Nice to Frank finally Maryland. meet you, man. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's worth mentioning in conclusion that we gave notice to Winchester Hall of today's interview and notably the county executive did not appear at work today. We won't speculate as to why.